okay, you can be on this side, but you gotta sit down. My grandmother is convinced that cats kill babies. Yeah. I always thought that was outrageous. And now we have the world's largest cat. And I'm like, you might. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Hannah Kaiser, and this is The Bandwagon. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, we had a lot of fun with the idea that a group of Marlins players even more anonymous and cobbled together than the original opening day lineup was winning. At least more than that intro might lead you to believe, with heart and pluck and a schedule that features a disproportionate number of games against the Mets. And that idea of getting in on the ground floor of a team with low expectations and a high ceiling whose success feels in some way related to your newfound enthusiasm is sort of the whole appeal of bandwagoning. But maybe you want a slightly higher long-term return on investment than getting emotional emotionally involved with the B-list fish. Well, that's why this week we're bandwagoning the Padres. Padres! Yeah! Padres! <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. Come on in. Plenty of room on the Friar Faithful bandwagon well, right make, now. Make it worth your while. Yeah, we'll definitely do Plenty that. Plenty of space. Straight out the Padres. That's the voice of broadcast legend and semi-professional laugh track Don Orsillo. It was a goddamn shame when Nesson broke up Orsillo and Jerry Remy, but ultimately much sadder for Red Sox fans who have since run out of reasons to not hate their team than it was for Orsillo himself, who landed in San Diego, a city with literally perfect weather and also the Padres. Ursillo is talking about bandwagoning because that's what this team specifically inspires. After decades of total irrelevance, they weren't just bad during 21 seasons since they last won a playoff series, they were boring too. The Padres did a full rebrand in the past few years, complete with high profile free agent signings. And while defensive highlight reel Manny Machado and all the Disney princes combined into one face, Eric Hosmer haven't exactly lived up to the <laughs> hype, it turns out that brown and yellow isn't the sewer system color scheme it sounds like. In fact, it looks pretty sweet in pinstripe form, especially when you're doing this. Fernando Tatis Jr. is the subject of multiple glowing profiles that attempt to capture in quotes and anecdotes the 21-year-old shortstop's once-in-a-generation greatness and how it just might save the game itself. And that's just in the past two weeks. Every league-leading home run is an instant gift, and still, the commercials for MLB Network tout his speed on the base paths. It only makes sense at this point that he was the first player in Major League history to hit 30 home runs and steal 20 bases in his first 100 career games. Oh yeah, he's just barely played 100 career games so far, and already rumors are swirling about what kind of extension he can command. Right now, Tatis' biggest problem is that his own manager thinks he should tone it down a little and be less good so as not to hurt anyone's feelings. And to that, I say, well, Mr. Jace Tingler, you are lucky that I don't think anyone, not even if they've spinelessly capitulated to a retrograde at best, embraces at worst position for the sake of what? Self-sabotaging your star player, your team, and the future of the sport in which you build a career should be mocked for their ridiculous name. <laughs> Tatis has the swag and star power to hopefully make a generation raised on instant gratification buy into the idea that baseball can be cool and even exciting despite an average about four minutes of buffering time between action. But finishing above 500 for the first time in a decade, that's the Padres, uh, will take more than just one dude. Luckily, uh, the Padres added Jake Cronenworth, a minor leaguer not ranked on anyone's top 100 prospect list, as they throw in with Tommy Pham in a trade this offseason. In camp, the coolest thing about Cronenworth was his potential as a two-way player. He pitches and plays shortstop. The expanded rosters have kept Cronenworth off the mound this year, and as we've established, the Padres have a pretty good shortstop. And so instead, he's been mixing it up with time at second base and third base, and actually mostly first base, a position that he hadn't played since college. It's going pretty well. Lined and caught at first by Cronenworth! He goes up and brings it down! Those plays were all made with Matt Stairs' old glove, which Cronenworth has been borrowing via Will Myers while testing the limits of just how versatile one guy can be. I mean, check out these dance moves! Also, Chris Paddock is manifesting his last name as a living pun by making full cowboy cosplay look cool. Actually, I'm not sure he's making it look cool so much as no one's going to tell the Ascendant Ease. Otherwise, root for the Padres! Welcome to the ground floor of one of baseball's most fun, most promising teams. If you like it here, consider sending flowers or a fruit basket to Rick Hahn. <laughs> All right, now we're going to do fan, not a fan. Unbuttoned baseball jerseys. Okay, multiple people have been doing this, and most notably, Clayton Kershaw. Show us your chest. This seems not in keeping with his personality, right? It was wide open, and he had no chest hair. 
his pecs stand out. So that's, he looks like some plastic Ken doll pec. Like it's just totally <laughs> smooth. And that's fine for him. <laughs> Real men have chest hair. Bam. <laughs> Bandwagon jinx. How the Marlins do? <laughs> I don't know, Bobuchet's on the IL. Oh, I know. Oh my God, what if something happens to Fernando Tatis Jr.? <gasps> <laughs> the curse is real. I will be so conflicted. I will feel so powerful and that will be amazing. And it will be sad for everybody else. Mostly great for me. That would be amazing. <laughs> you would have superpowers. Oh, fair. <laughs> Everyone's getting hurt, but I have superpowers. <laughs> People born in 2000. The very first baseball player born in 2000 hit a home run. Not the very first baseball player to be born in 2000, but the very first of that cohort to hit a home run did so this week. That's fine. <laughs> Lots of people were like, oh my god, this makes me feel so old. No, what makes you feel old is the fact that you're f***ing old. It's not his fault. <laughs> Paper straws. So everyone has a bad take, and my worst one is that I love straws. For a while, that was fine. You can have plastic straws, and now you can't have plastic straws because they're bad for the planet, which is true. Global warming is probably like the crisis of our generation, even more so than fascism. So we all <laughs> switched to using paper straws, which on the one hand, it's very confusing because I thought we weren't supposed to be wasting paper, save the trees. Also, they suck, they disintegrate. If you just like <laughs> lick a piece of paper over and over again, it loses structural integrity and then we put it soaking in your beverage, <laughs> also bad. I don't like the metal ones either. They're, they feel gross, you're supposed to get the little teeny tiny squeegee to clean out the insides of them, bad. Bamboo straws are cool. It is tough to find a good sustainable straw, but not so tough that we shouldn't do it because think of the polar bears. Paper straws, not a fan. Other sustainable straws, fan. All right, we doing baseball on the bird? It's boom, 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 boom. Is that <laughs> it? Did I get it right? Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> the self-evident greatness of Fernando Tatis Jr.'s Monday Night Grand Slam against the Rangers caused a bit of a stir and some dissension over whether or not it's a good idea to hit Grand Slams whenever you can. The Padres were already up by seven runs in the eighth inning when Tatis swung in a 3-0 count to put the game away. Rangers manager, understandably, Chris Woodward, was not thrilled and specifically cited the unwritten rules of baseball that don't actually say this because they're not written down anywhere, but apparently implied that you're not supposed to do that. And then Padres manager Jace Tingler also took the position that really hot hitters should settle for walking in a run because that'll make the opposing pitcher feel less embarrassed. Even Tatis apologized under duress. You know who hasn't heard of this unwritten rule, which, while still unclear on its precise parameters, seems tailor-made to strip the game of its most viral moments? Opposing pitchers. <laughs> Red Sox pitcher Eduardo Riguez tweeted, 3-0 counts rule, side-eye, side-eye. You just have to pitch better if you don't want that to happen. I never see that rule, and I take myself as an example because I'm the king. Guy with the crown, guy with the crown of 3-0 counts. Shruggy man, shruggy man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my mom reading Twitter. <laughs> Amir Garrett went with a simple, I don't follow unwritten rules, ellipsis. Colin McHugh provided a whole tutorial on how pitchers should prepare for aggressive hitters. Swinging in a 3-0 count should not be against any rules, no matter the score. Before a game, I would always look up to see what percentage guys swings 3-0. If it's over 20%, it means I just can't groove one. The guys who will never just give you a pitch at the plate are the toughest ABs. Good point. Uh, and Pirates pitcher Joe Musgrove offered up his thoughts. Quote, you can't sit in the dugout. You can't take your mask off. You're not allowed to high five. You can't sit next to anyone. No spitting, dot, 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 an extra dot. All rules that suck. <laughs> Guys that will hack it in any count are the most dangerous ones. And I don't know what he's trying to say. He might just be anti-rule altogether, which is not the message of this particular segment by burn. any means. But I think he ends up on Tatis' side. It just goes to show you, even opposing pitchers think that that unwritten rule is dumb. It's dumb. This week, we are rooting for the Padres, who are primarily fun because of Fernando Tatis Jr., who provides more fun than apparently anyone can even handle, and he should not let them tell him to do anything differently than he already is. In fact, I hope he manages to drive in five runs with one swing while his team is up by 10 runs, and the count is 4-0, and we're in the 15th inning somehow. Take that, stodgy old baseball rules.